Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a radar chart. Now here are two examples of a radar chart and these are some two definitions, one from Microsoft.com and one from Wikipedia. So according to Microsoft.com, a radar chart, also known as a spider chart or a star chart, plots the values of each category along a separate axis that starts in the center of the chart and ends on the outer ring. So for this example, we're talking about different categories of price, food quality, food selection, ambiance, service, timeliness, and family friendliness. Now if you might have guessed, this is probably a survey for a restaurant or a hotel. And we're looking at the different variables here, the different categories, on a scale of well, 0 to 5. 5 being the best, 0 being the worst. Now the axis is starting from the center ring here, so it goes up for each variable. So that is kind of a, a graphical explanation of Microsoft's definition. Now if we go to the Wikipedia's definition, it's, it's about the same. So they're saying that a radar chart is a graphical method of displaying multivariate data in the form of a two-dimensional chart of three or more quantitative variables represented on axis starting from the same point. Basically this is saying the same thing. Multivariate data, the data varies. There's there's multiple variables of data. There's, there's different data basically. and it's a two-dimensional chart, this is not three-dimensional, of three or more quantitative variables. So you have to have at least three. If you have two, it's really not going to be able to plot you a good radar chart. Three or more variables. If you have one, two, three, you can, you can at least plot. If you have one, two, and three, you can at least plot. Or maybe a triangle or some other type of polygon or multi-sided shape. Now, here they're saying they're starting from the same point. So they all start from the same point in the center. So that's basically your definition of a radar chart. Th this one is your basic radar chart with the color filled in. I'll show you examples of how other radar charts are built within Excel. This chart below is a little bit more of a hack in terms of putting a radar chart together. This is basically the same data here. We're looking to see if it uh, meets some threshold or exceeds some threshold. So basically if the rating is from 0 to 2, it's in the red zone. If it's from uh, 3.5 to 5, it's in the green zone. It's good. So these are some visual cues that give a little bit more context, I guess, to the radar chart. This is something you can do within Excel. So let's go to the first example, this, this one here. Now how do we create this one? I've already got this example here. What I'm going to do is just delete it and then show you how to create it. So basically what we're looking for is we're looking for our uh, variable data. So it's going to be, this table is basically going to uh, be averaged into these, these fields here. So you can see here there's an average formula or average function that's looking at the, uh, for this first column is B2 to B11. So basically it's going to take the average. If we select that, you can see that our average is 3.5 here. So we have that being the same thing. So we just kind of ran this formula. I created this formula and basically just ran it across and it copies it over to the adjoining cells. When we want to create the radar chart, basically all we need to do is just select the header. Now basically we don't need to select column A because that's just the descriptive portion of the customers. Let's just select here for price, the different variables from price to family friendly and the values. So I'm going to hold down the control key to select non-contiguous cells because they're not next to each other and you can see that it's the highlights seem to disappear but it's still highlighted so I'll go under insert and go into the charts group and go to other charts and down here I'm going to go ahead and select radar so let me go ahead and select the first radar. There's, there's three selections you can choose from the radar that just uh, displays the values relative to the center point this other one shows markers you can see this little dot here they'll show the markers and this one shows a radar that's filled so let me go ahead and just show you the first one, the plain vanilla radar. Let me go ahead and maybe adjust this a little bit. So we've created our first radar basically and one thing to think about in the creation of your radar chart is the placement of your variables. So you can see if they are put in groupings, like in this example where we're kind of put the food type of related items in the grouping, you know, how much it costs, what's the quality, what's the selection, and then we put some variables that relate to maybe non-food type of variables close to each other, such as the ambience of the restaurant or location, 
what's the service, what's the timeliness, is it a family friendly restaurant. In this example we're using of course a survey of a restaurant or hospitality uh, company. So when we look at our radar chart we can see where the bulk of the data kind of pushes out towards. So you can see here uh, this particular restaurant what people seem to indicate that they like the most is the ambiance and the service and timeliness and maybe this is more of an upscale restaurant where uh, people go there to choose fine dining. Uh, maybe it would be different uh, if it was a family family type of restaurant where they look for something that's family friendly and price and the, the food quality or food selection. You can probably see the, bul the, bu the bulges will probably kind of come out further amongst these areas. So if you categorize them a little bit close to each other you can probably see some trends in the data. Now there are probably people that say that radar charts are not one of the best charts to use if you want to showcase data and I would kind of say that's a little bit true but I mean I guess um, in certain aspects of where your audience might be familiar with radar charts it might provide some value. So I guess if you choose to use radar charts or spire charts you have to know your audience well. So this is an example of a radar chart with just the lines so I can now show you an example of what the other type of radar charts look like. We can just go in here and right click and go under change chart type and let's look at the radar chart with markers. And so basically it's just going to put markers for where the data resides. So let's say price is here at about between 2 and 3. So we look at price, it's like 3.5 here so it kind of represents it there. The other example to show is the filled radar chart. So I right click, go under change chart type and go to the change go to the fill radar here. Now you can see that's a fill. Now if you wanted to do some more modification to it, you can make it look a little bit more pretty. You can remove the legend here. So we can change the design of the fill. We can just go under with the chart selected. We just go under design and we have some chart styles here. So there's some defined chart styles here. We can give it a little bit of pizzazz. I like to select style 26 here and it basically gives it a little bevel and a little bit of a little shadow, a little 3D-ish shape. So it makes it look a little bit neater. So this one, this is this example. The other example is this one where we want to create a circle to look at a some thresholds, target areas maybe target area where we would be in the green and a target area where we would be in the red. So let me go ahead and explain how this is created. So basically the radar chart we have our values here which is that initial value here, the same one I had in the previous example. Now with the targets here, what we want to do is create a target at the outer, the, the upper range, 4.5 4 and above, and the lower range maybe out of 1. So what we need to do is create additional values. So I just called an, one value called good and basically it's all 4.5 across the variables and one which is bad which is going to represent the one here. I just made that a one across all the variables. So let me show you how to create this with these three uh, series of data. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go ahead and select, do a multi-select, select the header row first and then press control and select the other values here. Go ahead and insert other charts and what I'm going to do is just select the radar chart, just the first one here. So what you see here is, let me go ahead and make this a little smaller. And I'll just go ahead and delete the legend to make the radar chart a little bigger. Select that and click delete. So I'm going to keep this one and I want to change this one and the outer one, the outer ring, the inner ring and the outer ring. But first I'm just going to go ahead and give it some some shape here so I don't have to mix, I don't have to mess with it later on. So I'm going to keep this. What I need to do is first it made this red. I want to change the colors between red and green so one way I can do that is just right click and then do the shape outline. I'm going to change that to green. I'll use this theme color here, green, and then this shape select in there, right click and just change the shape outline to red. Right. So how do we get this line to cover between basically maybe three and five? What we need to do is increase the size of this line. So I'm going to right click, right click and go under format data series. 
And there, I'm going to come up with the format data series the windows. And with the line style, I'm going to increase the width. Now, I already kind of know it, but I'm going to basically increase it to, I believe it's about 40. You can play around with this a little bit. Oh, 40 is a little bit too big. Maybe it was 20. Yeah, 20. And here I can just adjust a little bit. So at least it doesn't go across the line go above the lines or below it. So maybe it was a little bit lower than 20. Uh, maybe it's about 15. So that sounds looks about right. Go ahead and I don't need to close this. Actually I can just select in the red one. So I'm going to do the same with the red one here. Select in there and go to line style and increase the width. So that might be actually that might be 10. Let me try 10. Yeah, so that's maybe a little bit more. So basically, I can just can keep increasing it until it fits into an area where I want the threshold to be. So let's say that I want it to be around 1. If the values go to 1 and below, it would hit into the red zone. So that's about uh, about 29.5. Click close. So th basically, that's how I do it. Now look, and you see here that this seems to the green seems to have covered up the blue what basically that is, is just the way that the series of data have been listed out so I'm gonna go ahead and right click format plot area oops sorry not format plot area. right click and just go under oops right click and go under select data the select data source window comes up and basically I want to move the series one which is the first series I want to move that down so I just want to move that down. As I move it down, you'll see that the blue line comes up. So I move series one down. So it shows on top of the other other rings. So that's basically what I want. Go ahead and click OK. And there we have our other example of a radar chart. So the first example was basically your plain vanilla radar chart. You can either have it with the radar chart, the radar chart with markers, or a filled radar chart. In our second example, we just have our radar chart, and we also have targets. The targets for high values and the targets for low values. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.